hello guys welcome to solving solutions your number one channel where i get solutions to all your solving problems it's nine seven in class again today how have you been we are going to look at um, some bands combination for landsat 8 images right we have them um, 432 652 431 562 and 654 combinations on today's video right good now um landsat 8 has about um, 11 spectral bands and they can be combined in different ways to enhance how we identify fissures on the earth surface right good so um this is actually a guide we've actually downloaded the imagery and then we also have the vector data that um, covers our area of interest right good now we are going to use the semi-automatic classification plugin you can get that from the plugins um, the plugins tab right good under the menu toolbar you can get that from the plugins tab you go to manage and install plugins and then you are going to get it however since it's it's been installed or it has been installed we can just click on scp and then say show plugin good now there are a few things you need to note um when you first of all launch the plugin you wouldn't see any um any imagery on your single band list so you are going to refresh now when you refresh this is actually the refresh button when you refresh the list you're going to see what the the layers on your layer panel being updated on this what on this list right good now when it has been updated on this list control shift then you select the last option you're now going to add it to what to your band set right good because you see that this is actually single band list and then this is what um band set definition so this is actually band set one we are going to see the meaning as we proceed on to this video right good now i haven't done that let's come down to pre-processing okay you know the imagery the scene covered by this imagery is actually large so by processing all of these depending on the specification of your system it might take time and then you might not need all of that right good so that's why we have this vector data that will help us clip or maybe crop out the imagery to our area of what interest so now let's come back to our SCP window. Now under the SCP window and then under pre-processing, let's come down to clip multiple rasters. Now under the clip multiple rasters, we are going to see what clip band set. So it's asking us which of the band set is it going to clip. Now we are specifying that it is going to clip band set one. You remember before now we've actually set the, the data under band set one, right? Because it was actually under what the single band list, but we moved it down to band set one because that's where we want to give the the clip multiple raster command to what to clip our what our bands from then the next thing is for us to click on use vector for clipping now what this means is that it is going to clip it based on this vector data so if you don't find your vector data there you click on refresh right good when you click on refresh the vector data that is on your layer panel should be what should be displayed there so if you have a multiple vector you can just click on the drop down and then you select the vector data which you want to use for your clipping so having done that you can just click on what run good now it takes you to your directory then you select the folder no we have created a folder called clip now in this folder all of those clipped images will be saved right good so maybe whatever folder you're working on you just um, actually create a new folder for your clip for your clipped images so we click on what select folder good you can see the progress we are actually on what 20 percent so when it gets to 100 percent those um, clipped images will be loaded on our layers panel on our layer panel right good then we go back to our scp we do a few modifications and then we now start with the band combination right good good so the clipping process is complete and then we can now see new set of image let's move this to the top move to the top good so we can now see new set of images with what the prefix of what clip right good so these were the initial or the original images we downloaded and then these are the clips so let, let's try to put these ones off so that we can now see what our clip images on good on our boundary so with this now we can now start with the processing right good of this what let's put this off as well of this what of this um our area of interest alone right so let's come back to scp 
node let's go to band set and then remember what we told you earlier whenever you come down to this point you try to you try to refresh it good so now when you refresh you now see what the new clipped um, the new clipped images on what on the band list so we select all of them and then we add it to our band set again right good so we can decide to delete this let's delete this particular you can decide to delete it or you can add more so that it will become band set 2 but because we have selected band set 1 let's just try to remove the content here then control shift you select down then what you add in there so we now have instead of the first set of images downloaded we now have what the clip right now let's come down to processing still under the pre-processing let's come down to landsat what we want to do now is that we want to do a few processing on the image or let's say on the images before ever we start our classification so we are doing a um, top of atmosphere reflectance and, and brightness temperature right good that's um, TOE, top of um, atmosphere right good if i'm not making a mistake so let's um, select the directory that contains our landsat bands so we click on this icon that will now move us to the directory so under the bands combination um, folder let's click on data select folder good so you now see what the seven and um, the seven bands that we have downloaded now we have the mtl file just like the metadata right good that gives information about the image that is being downloaded so when we get that we are going to see when the image was downloaded and some other information so let's click on open a file good you can see mtl then let's um, open that up all right, so image downloaded on 28 April 2022, Landsat 8, and the rest of the information. Now we need them um, applied US1 atmospheric correction, and then I believe all of the other, all of the other stuff are okay. So when all of these are set, we can now click on Run, so that we now have a top of atmosphere reflectance, right? Good. So we need to create another folder called. Um, reflectance so let's um, call this folder reflectance we select that good the process has begun right good now you can see that um, the top of an um, atmosphere reflectance um, process has completed so we can decide to uncheck the clip because that was actually the input layer you know we try to use the main band which are the main bands which are the what the bands one to seven however we later change them to what to the clipped bands because we are trying to work on this our area of interest right good now let's come back to our scp window good so um under the scp window we change it to the to the what to the clipped band and then every other thing remains the same so let's come down to the band set then under the band set you can now see the different bands that have been automatically created right good we we haven't just band one however we now have bands two and band three right good so now the first one is for what the reflectance that um, covers the the complete image and then this band three is for the reflectance that covers what the clipped image right good you can see all other information are actually what the same so now let's um, come down to the main window we are now going to look at what our classification so so far we have been able to perform a few corrections on our imagery or let's say on the images that we downloaded so now let's look at the scp toolbar and then we can now see what the rgb value which is what red green view now under the rgb values we have some predefined what bands combination so let's come back to our notes on our notes, we are looking at what 432 and um, 65 right? So now let's see natural color 432, right? So how do you now get the combination? Now under this um, drop down, you can just click on what 432, right? Good. When you click on 432, good. There will now be what a virtual band set that actually indicates what the bands that you've actually selected, right? Good. Now this is 432. So this is how let's put this out this is how the 432 band combination looks like 
let's look at um, the other combination which is what six five to right root now let's look at six five two we have six five two right good so this is how what the six five two appears right good as you can see from here that's um, about what agriculture right good now let's look at what the four three one we have what um four three one right good that's um four three one you see how the four three one also appeared right good so what we have as that the bathymetry right good now let's look at um five six two now this depends on whatever application you have for it maybe depending on what you want to do with your imagery now this is what for the five six two right good for the combination of five six two let's look at the other one which is actually the last one which was six five four so let's look at them um, six five four enter good so you now see how the different band combinations have actually given us different views or yeah enhance our view of what the features on the terrain right good this six five four has actually shown us what the water body let's see what it's been called what a vegetation analysis right good we can trace out this water body we can see that this place is a vegetation i think the cloud cover of the image is a bit high so we can see the water body and some other stuff so you can toggle through these different combinations to see how the imagery will then appear on those what on those different what on those different combinations so we have six five two we have them um, four three one we have them um, five six two and then we have what six five four so depending on the image you've downloaded whatever you want to do with it now how do you save this you know basically when you save it it will give you your default one to three band combination however that's not what you need so let's try and save it to see what comes up after saving it because this is actually a virtual layer as you can see it's actually a scratch layer which we need to save right good so we just then right click we go to export and then what save us good so we have it as what well, geotiff let's give it a file name good so let's call this um combo right good let's call this combo and then for the um layer we are going to use our vector data to define the layer then the resolution and every other thing will be the same so i haven't saved it we want to add the saved file to map right good so I believe every other thing is checked now. The CRS is what the projected zone 32 we are using. So we click on OK. Good. So now this virtual um, band set is actually the same thing as this combo that we have saved, right? Good. So we can decide to put all of these ones out so that we can have a, a clear picture of what we are working with. Good. So it's either you still continue using this virtual band set or you use the combo. Now remember we told you that when you save it, you are going to have it as what the default one, two, three. However, that was not the combination you used. On your virtual band set, when you come to this your RGB value layer, yeah, we we'll select a RGB color composite. When you come to this um, color composite selector and you change it to a different um, combination, your virtual band set changes, right? Good. Let's move to five, six, two. Your virtual band set changes, right? Good. But your combo which you have saved does not change and you can see that the color combination for your combo does not match what you have under your virtual band set so what do you do you double click to go to the properties of the symbology under symbology you are now going to see what the different band values or let's say the different bands we have the red green blue that's what actually this rgb represents so what we need for um five the last one is five six to right good so you select you indicate the bands here five six and then two right good so when you do that you either apply or you just click on ok directly and then it's going to give you the combination which you used to get when you use your what your virtual band set so you see now that if we close this and then we only use the virtual band set which is what five six two the combo which we have also saved is also having what five six two so when you save it or let's say when you export it out of your QGIS, you are going to have it by default as one, two, three. That's the band combination. However, if that's not what you want, which definitely will not be what you want, you need to go to symbology and then you um, specify the band sets you want to use for your combination, right? Good. 
So before we leave, let's um, try to look at another combination. Let's see 431. Let's put on our virtual band set. Okay. Let's instead of 431, let's look at 652. Good. Now let's look at 652. So we are going to change this combo to 652 to see if we are going to have this particular representation again, right? Good. So double click on that. We have them um, 652, right? Good. So you can see, okay, 652, we click on OK. So when we put on the combo, we are going to see that we are having the same imagery as we have on our what, on our virtual band set. So when you're done with this, you can go to what your print layout, which is what um, Control P. Let's call this um, combo as well. Then we click on OK. Then under your print layout, okay, let's change this to portrait. Good. You can now add your map and then you do your few modifications on how to what how to get um, an aesthetically pleasing map and you are good to go right good so let's see good so depending on what you want to do you just add other map elements and then you have what the band name the combination the band's combination maybe as your title and then you are good to go so we believe that we have provided solution to this particular gis remote sensing problem Please, if you have any question, if you want us to guide you on anything, you can actually reach us via our email or you send us some direct messages on any of our social media handle and we are going to get back to you as soon as possible. So until we see you on our next video, ensure you keep being a good jazz guy, yeah, remote sensing enthusiast and keep having a good time. Bye.